Stephen A. Smith came out with an, an outrageous prediction that the Los Angeles Lakers would be in the Western Conference Finals, either facing Golden State or Houston. Now, to me, that prediction would be great if Golden State wasn't there, if the Houston Rockets weren't there. But eventually, LeBron is either going to have to play Houston or Golden State, and they're one and two. They're, they're possibly going to be first in the conference or second in the conference. So if LeBron James is not like third and fourth, he's going to have to face one of those teams. And to me, he can't knock out Houston. He can't knock out the Golden State Warriors. Now, people might say, well, this is LeBron James. He's been to eight straight finals. Guys, you got to remember, this is the Western Conference. You could be the best player in the game and not be able to make it out. You know, Tim Duncan had years. That's why if you look at the San Antonio Spurs, they never had back-to-back -back championship, back-to-back -back years because it was so tough to get out of the West. If you look at the um, Kobe Bryant, for example, he was the best player in the game for some time. He was getting knocked out in the first round with, you know, Smush Parker, Samaki Walker, stuff like that. And, you know, mind you, he had a 3-1 lead on the Suns, and he got knocked out in the first round. So he was the original first 3-1 blown lead or whatever the case is. But the uh, the depth of the Western Conference, the amount of bodies they're able to throw at you. Like, and I understand people are excited LeBron's in L.A. and they, they know what he's capable of. And Stephen A. Smith is, you know, he's, he's not betting against LeBron James, whatever the case is. But... This is this is a different animal. I know they got veterans. I know they got Lance Stevenson. They got Rondo. They got JaVale McGee and stuff like that. But if you just, just look at this. LeBron James, when he had Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, J.R. Smith, Channing for all them guys. When they played OKC last season, OKC beat them by like 30. It was Melo, Westbrook. And um, Paul George. You two telling me Paul George and Westbrook are going to go down to a LeBron James team with just Lance Stevenson and JaVale McGee, and you got Westbrook and um, Paul George? Now, I know they got knocked out the first round. I'm just trying to explain to you the difference. Like, it's not the fact that LeBron James is not good enough. It's just the surrounding pieces will not promote that fear that LeBron James does. LeBron James is dangerous, but he doesn't have a clear number two guy like a Kyrie Irving or a Kevin Love. He doesn't have that clear number two guy yet to to have people thinking like, hey, we can make the Western Conference Finals. The worst part about all this is everybody was just arguing about if the Lakers could even make the playoffs a couple months ago. Now they're saying he could make it to the Western Conference Finals. I think it's far-fetched. He's going to have to go through Houston or he's going to have to go to Golden State. And one of those teams will... If healthy, we'll knock them out. It's, unless you're going to think it's a war of attrition and the Golden State Warriors are going to fall to fifth, they're going to face Houston, they're going to knock them out early. Like Maybe something like that could happen, but common sense tell you one of those teams are going to be one, one or two. LeBron's Lakers could be the fourth seed, the fifth seed, or third, I mean, possibly third seed. But I think it's just too tough. You got the Pelicans. Who, I mean, they took a step down with Rondo leaving, but they found some sort of identity there, especially with Meritage. And then you got Anthony Davis playing MVP basketball. You got the Houston Rockets, which are tough. Um, Portland Trailblazers, I don't know about them. <laughs> like, whatever. Because there's something wrong with them. Because every, every year you think they're going to take a step up, they can't get out of the first round. So, I'm not worried about them. But, you know, you have the Timberwolves, which are stacked as well. So, that being said, I don't, I don't, see, I don't see that happen. I don't see them making it to Western Conference Finals. I think it's too tough unless they have another rabbit to pull out of the hat, or there's injury that occurs, whatever the case is. I don't see that happening. That's that's a really tough prediction, and I'm a I'm a Lakers fan. I would love to see it happen, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Like I would love to see that. You know what I'm saying? But year one, new guys, young guys. I think they're a fourth or fifth seed, possibly third seed, but I, I just don't see them progressing past the semis if they get that far. I don't see them progressing past the semis. 
You get it to the Western Conference Finals? Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see that. And LeBron's comments on the shop, which I think is going to be a great series, basically a barbershop series. It's um going to be on HBO. I think it's, I think his comments about like how he viewed himself compared to white people and how he just wasn't messing with white people at the age of fourteen. There were, it, it sounds crazy, but a lot of youth feel like that, especially playing sports. You know, when they go to a school to play college, uh, athletic sports, especially in high school, they don't look at it as I'm going to the school to learn. They just I'm here to play sports to springboard my career for sports, and it's kind of sad because. You will want a kid to enjoy the experience of high school, prep school, whatever you know school they're going to. Hey, you're a part of our school. You're part of our history. Enjoy it. But kids in the inner city, they feel very out of whack and out of place in those situations because they are, it's not brainwashed, but they just see the realities of that, the dichotomism of how African minorities live as opposed to the way that white people live. Like, for example, I'm pretty sure when LeBron was early in his years, when he's going to school, he sees kids getting dropped off by the parents, Mercedes Benz, Range Rover, stuff like that. And maybe he had to take the bus or maybe he had to take a bike, you know, different kind of things like that. Like he's seeing he, the kids get packed lunch and, you know, he, he has to, you know, get money out of his pocket to get lunch. Now, I'm saying early in his high school career, because I know later in his high school career, this man was driving to school with Rage Rovers and all this other stuff, uh, H2s and all this other the $90 million contract in high school. But the it's not surprising. I'm just shocked that he would actually say that on television to tell you the mind of a 14-year-old kid. Like, he would actually spill his guts. Like, I feel like he's been the most vulnerable he's ever been in his entire life. By saying something like that, you're opening the floodgates to a lot of criticism. But what he's also doing is he's giving hope for a lot of the kids that are in the same situation. Hey, maybe, you know, there's a kid, Ricky. Ricky has a scholarship to go to a private high school and play ball. He feels out of place or whatever the case is. But now he knows hey, LeBron went through the same thing. So I can persevere through this. And I can um, not necessarily assimilate, but I can find common ground with my classmates and not feel like I'm, you know, I'm sticking out like a sore thumb. That's what, like, a lot of kids feel. And it's not just that. You know, like, when you look at a first-generational college kid, when they go to college and they just view life how they see it and, you know, how uh, kids that are used to going to college, um, they're, like, what's whatever. Like, they don't even care. They're partying, you know, they... they I'm not to say that kid, first generation kids don't party or whatever the case is, but some of a lot of them take a lot more serious than let's say a kid who's they're from a rich family, rich background, or they're from a, a middle class background. Like, hey, we're used to all of us go to college, all us get a master's. You know, they they don't. You know, the kid from the first generation is probably not gonna take it for granted as much as the kid that's used to it. And you know, they'll they'll see when they go to first generation college college kid, they'll see the big difference, like. Hey, what are you doing for spring break? Well, I'm just going home. Uh, well, we're going to Cancun. You know, my parents have a villa or, you know, little things like that. It's just little references or whatever the case is. But for him to feel that, hey, white people are up here and we're under the table. Now, that's that's crazy because now in his partnership in life, he sees that that's not the case. But there's still kids out there that are still going through this. And it's, it's very sad and it's very frustrating to know that people from different socio and economic backgrounds just have a a very large a large difference in perspective of how life is. Like for an inner city kid to tell you he feels like he's under the table. That's crazy. That's great. And he was going to a prep school. Now imagine an inner city kid that's going to a public school, how he, how he feels or whatever the case is. I mean, maybe that depicts like the dropout rate and why a lot of kids don't want to pursue their education or, you know, like why a lot of things happen. But it's, it's I kind of, I got to commend him on being vulnerable like that because I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel, felt this way or have felt this way in the past, whatever the case is, especially like student athletes. 
you know, a lot of student athletes, they just, they're looked at as mercenaries. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but a kid will be living on one side of town, play ball in another town all together, or play ball on the other side of town where they're out of district, because they're basically seen as a mercenary. We, we need this player to make our team state champions or whatever the case is. So it's an interesting perspective. Check out the shop. I don't think they're going to make it to the Western Conference Finals, though, Lakers. I love you guys. I'm a Laker fan, baby, but I don't see that happening. Hoops Junction, where hoops meets hoopla.